Let's go to London and speak to Catherine Ravy, who's a legal advisor with Law for Palestine. Thank you so much for hanging on for us, Catherine. And I suppose the most important question will be, will these arrest warrants help the people of Gaza? At the moment, it doesn't look like it. Nothing seems to have changed in terms of the directions that the Israeli military is receiving. Because the ICC is saying to Netanyahu and Gallant, we're going to look into how you've been ordering your military's actions. Yes, I do think it is important to note that this is a historic step in the pursuit of justice for Palestinians and in the fight against systemic impunity. But you are correct, international legal mechanisms, especially the ICC, is not a reactive court. Uh, much of what it can do is unfortunately coming on the back of severe injustice and indeed genocide. So for the people of Gaza and for those who are dying every day, uh, this is uh, welcome news, but not justice that they are going to experience anytime soon. What is the likelihood of there ever being a trial at the ICC? I think, um, so a trial at the ICC is um, impede, or is, I suppose, uh, dependent on whether or not uh, an arrest can actually be followed through. Um, I think it is going to be up to the states and up to international cooperation to see Netanyahu and Gallant arrested and brought to the ICC. Indeed, this is an obligation under international law, but the court's rulings are judicial uh, in order to enforce them that is political. So it is really going to be dependent on the states to follow through with the Rome Statute and their obligations under international law in order to bring them before the court. Um, I think that is uh, going to be dependent. I think we've seen a large call for it internationally, but we've also seen a lot of diplomatic protection provided by states such as the UK and Germany, uh, which I think will prove quite unlikely in bringing this to the ICC. Uh, Catherine, you mentioned the word genocide. How will the ICC's examinations, charges, investigations into the actions of Netanyahu and Gallant how will they tie into the International Court of Justice making a ruling about whether the Israeli military is committing a genocide? Apparently, the ICJ judgment may not come for 10 years. Can the ICC operate independently without that sort of judgment from the ICJ? The ICC's mandate does not necessarily cover the crime uh, of genocide in the same way that the ICJ does, and neither court really function in any fast-moving capacity. Um, so un unfortunately, I do think that will take some time. However, it is crucial to recognize that what the ICC does state about what's happening is absolutely instrumental in defining what this is, which is a genocide. I think what the ICC can determine goes a long way in setting a standard in international law and the international community in really crystallizing what we know to be true, and that Israel is operating um, unlawfully and has for quite some time. Um, so I think this is a huge move for international law and does show that we need a return to the rule of law. I think the court moves quite slowly and is, as I mentioned, dependent on state cooperation. So this really is, once again, a question before the international community to bring forward this injustice and to to try to carry out its mandate, as we've stated that we would through the Rome Statute. Yeah, I mean, look, this is not really a legal question for you, Catherine. You've mentioned it a couple of times about what sort of protection Netanyahu and Gallant may have from countries that support Israel. Um, Joe Biden has called the decision by the ICC outrageous. Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister of Hungary, he has said specifically because of the arrest warrants issued by the court, he's going to invite Benjamin Netanyahu to see him in Hungary and not arrest him. What does that all do for the credibility of international law when states say, fine, we're not going to do what the legal order is? I think this is a great question, and I think we've seen what's happening in Gaza really pose this question to the world. I think we have to remember that international law came from an era of colonization in which there were a few state actors in the world that had all of the power and will and secured themselves onto the Security Council at the UN. So our entire understanding of international law already is hinges on a world order that 
is unequal and does it is not just. And we have continually tried and pushed to, to break that down and to show that all states can be held accountable under international law. But frankly, it is dependent on world order. And as we've seen, countries like the U.S., who isn't even a party of the Rome Statute, has tremendous sway in delegitimizing the court and in showing that Israel can, in fact, get away yet again with what it's been doing for likely even longer. Um, and it's a frustration that is really going to require international solidarity and, and, and collective movements. I, I will just say, you know, when it comes to non-cooperation with the ICC, it is possible to refer this to the Assembly of State Parties, which is actually meeting in the beginning part of December. So there is potential hope to see some action from a collection of states to come together and demand cooperation with these arrest warrants. Catherine, really, thank you so much indeed for talking us through all of that. Really instructive for all of us. Catherine Ravy.